eh, es que en, en diciembre, no me, no me acuerdo muy bien, porque el año, hubo un par de años que lo postergaron y no lo cambiaron. Entonces no sé cuál va a ser este año la dinámica, de hecho se ha discutido harto en el país de cancelar sí. esta modificación. Claro, aquí de también, la... de vez ¿Sí? en cuando lo propone. Esperemos que no. Pues, es que yo pienso que es mejor... Eh... La gente quiere más luz en la... En, en, sí. No sé por qué lo piden en la mañana, ¿no? En general. Nosotros querríamos tener más luz en la tarde. Y eh, cuando cambian el horario, no. pues se oscurece mucho antes. Claro. Es como sales a las seis de la tarde y está de noche. Eh, entonces, claro. Y en la mañana... Nadie está a las seis y media, siete, realmente teniendo claro. una vida nacional. Quizás en Colombia sí, porque en Colombia las universidades parten las clases a las seis de la mañana. Pero en Chile todo parte a las ocho, entonces que esté amaneciendo tan temprano no es un... No claro, es no tiene sentido. Tanto claro. como si fuese más bien en la noche. Entonces ya en realidad con el horario de invierno, tenemos todo el mundo sale a las 6 de la tarde del trabajo a dormir Así. Eh, ¿ya se está retransmitiendo en YouTube? Sí. Ahí, un minutillo más, yo creo que el enlace allí debería haber llegado. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bueno, creo que podemos empezar. Sí, cuando tú quieras. Sí, no te oigo, vale, ok. ¿Ahora sí? Sí, ahora sí. Ya cuando, Peña, tú, y, y cuando tú me digas, comienza. Vale, perfecto. Voy empezando. Eh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Iparco seminar. Today I'm pleased to introduce you Natalia Inostro Zapino from the Universidad Autónoma de, de Chile. Natalia received her PhD in molecular physical chemistry from the Andres Bello University in Chile in 2009. After that, she moved to Madrid as a postdoctoral researcher. Then she moved to NASA Ames Research Center in California. She also worked uh, as a fund seat postdoc at the University of Chile. Since 2018, she has been working at the Universidad Autónoma de Chile, and in 2020, she was the director of the Ministerio de Ciencia MinSIT. Since 2021, she has been also involved in the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Staff Exchange Action as Chilean Med Researcher. Natalia is an expert in uh, quantum chemical uh, determination of structural and uh, electronic properties of uh, small molecules of interest to astronomy and astrophysics. She has extensive experience in structural and spectroscopic properties of atmospheric and astrophysics system, as well as light absorption processes in organic disentitized solar cells. She maintains active several collaborations with different institutes, such as NASA, Max Planck Institute in Leiden, the Material Science Institute and uh, Theoretical Chemistry and Physics Department in Madrid, and the Laza Astrochemistry uh, Laboratory in uh, Brazil. She also started a new project related with astrochemistry to go deeper into the formation and destruction processes in interstellar sources. She is now the head of Quanto Astrochemistry Group in the Universidad Autónoma de Chile. Today, Natalia will present her work titled Molecular Universe, a look from quantum chemistry. So thank you very much, Natalia. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for this kind of invitation. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. I hope to be there, actually, but uh, OK. So we have to postpone our, our um, next trip. So uh, um, this is the only reason because uh, we are working now on this talk remotely. OK, thank you so much. Uh, well, as uh, Enrique mentioned, I'm from Chile, and I'm working on Chile, and in, uh, specifically in the Autonomous University of Chile. And this university, I create this group dedicated to, to the astrochemistry. It's the first group in astrochemistry in Chile. And now there are other tiny group that are um, working a little bit in, in astrochemistry, astrochemistry as well. But this one is, is still the, the first one. And we are working a lot with the, uh, uh, with the complex organic molecules, okay? Um, so today um, I'm gonna talk about a little bit uh, about our results, our main results. And I, for sure, most of you perfectly know that Chile is the, is the astronomy capital of the world, hosting more than 70% of the instruments who are studying the universe. In particular, every, everyone knows the ALMA, and the ALMA is in the north of our country. Yeah? And here's the capital, Santiago, which is actually in the center of the, this tiny country. And we have a south with the amazing landscape. And also we have the Atacama Desert where the, all the instruments are located. Um, and we can study the universe uh, on different regions um, in radio, from radio, submillimetric and millimetric wavelengths, for example, using ALMA. And but we have the, e, um, the ELT as well under construction now. So we have a, amazing observatories in our country to study different regions of the universe, as most of you know, right? right. Uh, I have to be right. OK. okay. Um, and here we have a really um, brief of which kind of different observatories we have. We have the public one also for outreach for people and to visit in the, um, doing the tourists um, and visit our country. 
And we have, of, of course, our telescope to study the universe uh, and analyze the, the data. Uh, La Silla, um, Tololo, as well as Las Campanas and Gemini. Um, well, so I'm gonna talk about a, a little bit about molecules in the universe and how, how we can study these molecules from our point of view, from the chemistry point of view. Um, considering that we have a really, really um, different condition. If we compare the, con the conditions in the inter interstellar medium with the condition on Earth, so we can see that the, there is a huge difference. So essentially the laboratory in the Earth are always working under normal pressure, okay, uh, one atmosphere. So um, essentially at 25 degrees and under this condition, the, the possibilities to obtain product in a laboratory doing reaction, uh, it's, uh, it's here. When we study the universe, we have to think in mind that the conditions are totally different. So densities are pretty low, and of course the temperatures are pretty low. Um, we can uh, analyze the, the typical time for chemical process, um, and we can compare this with the star formation time scale, and we can see that the, these conditions are so um, complicated to obtain a, a chemistry. However, the last 20 years, we have an explosion, and we have a, a huge amount of molecules that take. Huge amount in interstellar medium means today more than two. 250 molecules already detected just in the interstellar medium, okay? Um, so we have a, a huge quantity and it's increased every time, every day. So the last year, there is a group in Spain that detect more than 20 molecules new. Okay, so we are in a really good uh, moment in astrochemistry because we have the capabilities, we have an instrument, we have a couple of laboratories that can provide experimental data. So most of the molecules that you can see here, most of them are really unstable on host. For example, there is radicals, there is... Um, so reactive species that we cannot characterize properly in laboratory. So the anion was an, an, an amazing um, pace of study because it wasn't expect at all. So Professor Herbs, maybe more than 30 years ago, he mentioned that that anions must be detected in different regions. And nobody, and nobody care about, about his research or about his comment. But after this, and maybe 10 years ago, the anions start to be detected. So before, nobody, nobody can think if this is, can be possible, no? But now it's a reality. We can detect molecules really complex. Um, but what is the problem here? essentially the data. Uh, if you are thinking in a molecule that is pretty common, for example, water, we can get all the data to, to, to conduct any detection for water, for example. Even though all the data is not gonna be easy, I'm gonna show you how, a couple of a spectrum, um, but if you are trying to catch up complex molecules, Complex molecules mean more than six atoms. Um, the 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 situation starts to be really really hard. Okay, so at the beginning, most of the detection was uh, based on two atoms, three atoms, four atoms, and the, all the explanation regarding to the physical process. Um, regarding using the molecules because molecules are treasures in different regions, are uh, where most most of the time were uh, accept acceptable acceptable okay, but when the astronomers and start to detect complex organic molecules, many things that were supposed to be resolved start to be really unresolved. 
okay? It's a happen, it's the same that it's happening now with the James Webb, right? We found, they detect, they analyze galaxies and they see that the galaxy, the galaxies and the size of the galaxy are totally um, are in a positive way that the model, models predict. So the 90% of the model are fail now to predict the size of those galaxies, right? So in the in astrochemistry, it was the same. When the astronomers start soar to detect complex organic molecules, well, the all the models start to fail. So and then we start to get more 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 job. Essentially, people working on quantum chemistry because molecules must be detected. They they need uh, they need data. They need uh, a really accurate data coming from the laboratory or coming from the model and the theory. Um, so we are so the last then. Um, considering this idea, the last 10 years, we are trying to work together with people, no? In our laboratory and, and also with people um, on uh, in the observatory doing uh, detections. So the, the molecular diversity, it's uh, of, in a positive way that the molecular complexity. So now we are in the, in the age of a, uh, uh, um, and analyze molecules, essentially complex molecules, even more complex than in the past, e uh, over the methoritis. Mm -hmm. um, see? Um, okay, so at Go the beginning, ahead, uh, Natalie. <laughs> okay. so at the beginning was uh, just uh, simple molecules. Well, uh, not simple molecules. So there is a a lot of information. Uh, is still lack regarding with the ammonia, which is for my, but the, just four atoms, and also with the methanol, the diol as well is there. So essentially, we are not moving so fast to understand everything, but we are trying to move to finally find the key aspect to understand the origin of life. So the molecules as uh, the treasure of the re different regions, but also are maybe the key aspect to understand how the life, as we know, is start in our planet, you know? And this is an, a goal maybe more, more personal or more philosophical, as I said, okay? Um, well, in quantum chemistry, everything starts with these uh, figures. So if you have this, and then you can get many things. That's the point, that's the key point. But what is this? This is the uh, an, an initial, yeah? We are working on, on mechanic quantum chemistry, and we start everything with the um, Hamiltonian, and the Hamiltonian is formed by, the, by two operators, this, kinetic operators and um, potential operators. And here we have the potential energy surface a curve for a, one diatomic molecule. Just think in this example, or maybe the hydrogen, molecular hydrogen, which is common for everyone, must be look like this. Every time that we start to separate both atoms in a, any diatomic molecules, we can get energies. And if we can get, get energies, we can get then, uh, if we resolve the, um, the, um, the, the, the wave function, and then we can get the observables, which are the energies and the raw vibrational energy sometimes if we are working with the molecular Hamiltonian. So this is our first start point. Uh, construct a really good potential energy curve if we are working with the, the two atoms. If we are working with more atoms, essentially we have to construct a surface and any surface, it, it looks like this, okay? It's not easy, it's not just in a plane. Um, and here, well, and then I'm gonna discuss a little bit more about this, but essentially we can understand that if we get the best potential energy curve, we can get better data, that's the goal. And, and the, this curve essentially is the harmonic curve, yeah? 
um, this is fitting uh, using the harmonic model. And um, of course, if we, for us, it's working just in this region, but if we want to study seriously any system, even if, if it's a diatomic system, we must to include a lot of correction to describe correctly um, different aspects in any molecule. So for this reason, we construct and we use methods um, really sophisticated um, because our focus is, um, is, of course, try to provide data to, to, to get any detection or new detection for molecules. So um, in general, when people are working in a laboratory and do a spectroscopy predictions, the, um, the match or the agreement between data and the experimental results are 10 centimeters to minus one. Uh, essentially, this uh, approximation for us, it's really bad. And it must be less. Actually, in the last works from our group, is uh, we are working with the match between data uh, and prediction uh, about zero uh, to the one centimeter to the minus one. So, uh, but this is just the beginning. Okay, um, if we can uh, include correction, then we can get better potential. If we can, if we have a, a better potential energy surface, and then we will get a better starting point. Because after construct any ab initial curve or any ab initial surface, so we have to um, use different programs um, using different theories to resolve these equations. So essentially we use the perturbational theory or variational method. It's gonna be the pen of the system. And for diatomic system, uh, we developed a code long time ago, and it was a specific, and it was an numerical code to resolve the, the spectroscopy parameter for any linear molecules. And we include um, centrifugal distortion corrections and hand harmonic corrections as well. And when we have um, polyatomic molecules, uh, so we have to construct a potential, and it's look like this. We have to include many, many different terms um, to describe all the all the um, parameters in, in different type of molecules. Um, here we have uh, the the equation at uh, our beginning. We start to to um, to resolve this equation. I'm pretty sure that the most of you know perfectly what's going on here. And the key aspect for us is to uh, describe really good the potential energy. Um, we use uh, actually right now. For the atomic molecules, it was a, a linear code and it was a variational. And for more, um, for bigger molecules, we use um, perturbational theory. What can we obtain from any potential energy surface? Well, we can get equilibrium structure, frequencies. We can characterize perfectly the transition state if they are, and we can study reaction. Um, um, and we can characterize perfectly different isomers for every different type of surface. Uh, we can predict some signals in the infrared and Raman spectra as well. Um, I have to float group eight. And we can obtain uh, the thermochemical quantities. So we can estimate the enthalpies, we can estimate entropy, we can analyze our system and and determine deeps of bending energies as well. Um, most people, most, uh, all other people in the group are also working on tunneling corrections or in rates uh, and reaction rate coefficients as well. All of these parameters or all the observed observable parameters that you can obtain are coming from the from the your potential energy surface. And this is the key aspect in quantum chemistry. Um, so here we have, uh, once again, the comparison between one harmonic curve and one and, and what's happened with this potential when you introduce 
the harmonic aspect in the equation, then you have a rigid rotor in your equation and the um, harmonic oscillator. And then you include, if you want to get just the harmonic frequencies, you are just working in the mid, in the minimum region. But if you want to go up in the energies and reproduce or with that in a really good way and in another spectrum, then you have to include correction, the centrifugal distortion corrections for the rigid rotors. And um and also include high harmonic correction. Uh, that's mean include more term in this part in, in the expansion of the um, harmonic oscillator. Okay. And when you do that, then you get this kind of type of course, as as I already show you for the case of the C F plus. Okay, and that's our goal. Include a lot of corrections. And some of the correction looks like this using perturbation authority. We can obtain the um, the force, and we obtain the energy levels as well. We can obtain the, our, our hand harmonic correction, and we can correct the frequencies. And we then we are available to obtain the harmonic frequencies and the hand harmonic frequencies as well for every system. Okay. Um, well, as a sign of harmonicity is used in the spectra, which is a code that we use from, uh, from NASA group. And this is a, a code based on perturbation authority. Uh, actually, with this, uh, this uh, code, we can obtain a really good precision, as I mentioned, 0.1 centimeter to the minus one when we compare our data with um, results, uh, with the laboratory results. So here we have a um, slide that resumes most of the most relevant um, systems that we are uh, studying in different times, in different countries with different groups. At the beginning, it was just diatomic molecules because this was when we started doing this in Chile, and it was a long time ago. And, uh, and then the number of atoms was increasing, 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 and we we start with the four atoms, um, the five atoms. Then we start with the non-rigid molecules as this, and then we start to uh, put more chemistry in in this uh, like a soup. No, okay. So this is the the main result for diatomic molecules in general for all of them we were able to get the, the best potential energy surface at the time that the, this type of um, um, research was was uh, was did was um so we use a mrci method uh, with the using the dunning basis set and we compare with a feed obtained using the experimental data so we you can see that the match between the hour 30 and the experimental result was really it was really good and we we took this uh this result and we run our code uh, to reproduce the spectroscopic constant that we are focused on. So rotational constants are important for us, and and also the, the frequencies. Um, another important parameter is when the molecules has or no dipole moment. Then then we are going to discuss this a little bit. So our result for this detection it was uh, is in this line and. And this uh, molecule was the CF plus. It was detected using APEX, which is one um, instrument that is uh, located in our country. And they found three signals for the rotational quantum number for, for these rotational transitions, for, for these transitions, and the zero, zero to one, one, two, and two or three. And they characterize, of course, uh, different parameters, not just the, these detections. And they and then um, they assign this um, this transition to this uh, cation. And we run our our code, and we obtain this result, and we compare uh, uh, with the observations. Um, the precision it was uh, it was not really good at this moment, but uh, was as I mentioned it was at the beginning. Now we uh, we also use uh, just a numerical codes 
um, and there is a lot of imprecision when you use uh, um, when we use numerical codes. Uh, but the, the the program, the linear one, it was a really good uh, essentially because we can essentially compare in the paper that it's uh, exposed there. Uh, we can uh, uh, compare uh, uh, and get a really good agreement with the experimental data that that we found for this cation. Uh, when we increase the number of um, the atoms, then we have to modify um, the theory. Uh, in this case, we abhor uh, different studies using um, silicon molecules. We were worried about silicon molecules, uh, maybe in 2008, um, and a little bit earlier than this. And the idea was to try to obtain the best rotational constant to to conduct any uh, detection the key parameters are uh, rotational constant of course um frequencies of course must be a harmonic frequencies um another is some uh, so the, uh, and also the right condition sometimes are are relevant are important um uh so our idea in this work was to try to obtain the best rotational constant, get the best um, quantum chemistry recalculations. We use um, bases that, that that in basis set, which has um, basis that you can increase the moment the the um, one exponent in the equation of the basis set, and you can increase the precision of your result. And then we extrapolate to the basis set to obtain our um, rotational constant in the minima, BE. Okay, this is in, in, in the minima. And, but for astronomers, not as, uh, it's also important not just get the B in the in the Cleveland region, sino, sino addition, sorry, and this is also important also uh, obtain the B0. And um, if we have a, a molecule with different moment uh, moment of inertia, so we have to get more rotational constant. So in this case, this molecule is linear, just we have a one rotational constant B0. And then we obtain, we um, provide the base data for this type of system that include the um, the rotational constant obtained in the minima using the extrapolations, and we include the correct correlation, in, which means that the here essentially in quantum chemistry we work. Or most of the people work with the with the um, electron uh, in the core uh, are frozen essentially. Yeah? So here we include all the electrons. They are they are not were frozen at all. So we include the interaction of the electron in the first uh, shell. And this is that's uh, the, this parameter means. And this parameter is huge essentially. Now if we can compare. So every correction from uh, due to the vibrational movement are 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 really lower compared with the co the correction include due to the um, electrons in the core, okay? Also, uh, this is something that we can also provide for any observation uh, observational analysis. Um, this type of system, uh, another tetraatomic system, um, it was. Uh, the idea with this system was was uh, analyze different isomers. So this isomer, which is the minima, was detected long time ago. Um, but it's also the many lines, many U lines around these assignations. So when we have a U, U lines, and because the fragrances can be pretty close in any spectrum, so we we think that the, we must to provide always and all the time the energy for the minima, which is this, and it's also the, the tech, and it's supposed to be the most stable one, um, but also there is other isomers that are pretty close in energy, maybe pretty close sometimes, and other times they are far. 
So this is the idea in quantum chemistry. We analyze all, all different types of isomers and we uh, obtain the energies to be sure that where can be, where are they essentially no? in, in any potential energy surface. Um, so this is a reason because here I'm presenting three different isomers, the stable one and the next to uh, isomers, the, the singlet band um, and the, the cyclic one also, which is a singlet molecules. Uh, and this type of, um, of work, we use cobble cluster and also we use a um, dunning basis set. We use also the extrapolation process, but here include more corrections. Uh, we include the correction due to the electrons in the core, and but include the um, scalar relativity, relativity effects. Sorry, and we use the spectra, uh, which is the one of the main code that we use currently now. Uh, and in this work, we also compare with multimod, which is basis on variation on method. Um, we can perfectly characterize those, uh, those systems. Uh, we characterize the ground state and the, the next two isomers in the energy. So we, we perfectly know where they are in the surface. And after this, um, and also we provide the base data for, for, to include in, in catalog uh, um, regarding to the dipole moment for this system and the frequencies and rotational constant. So this is uh, how, our, uh, how um, our results looks like. Um, essentially for this type of molecules, we can obtain A0, B0, C0, which are rotational constant correct, but other aspect that that explained before. Um, we are not uh, worried, we are not interested to get rotational constant in the equilibrium um, uh, distance. Okay, so we have to go a little bit far. Uh, and this is not simple. Um, I, I know that this looks simple, but the, the, the theory and the timing involved in, in this type of work uh, with a really, high accuracy are really um, are, are not uh, we've of course characterized the geometry of the molecules we have to optimize the molecules get the minima the most stable geometry for any molecules and from this we can go far and include uh, our data and resolve equations using spectral multimod to compare um, here I guess I have uh, the ground state and uh, we compare the this column with some data. There were just few data, experimental data, and then also they, there was a um, as it always happened when we analyze the they are harmonic frequencies. Sometimes there is a huge difference between ex even experimental groups and also with people working on theory. So, but essentially we feel confidence about this uh, result because we're in agreement with some experiment that we confirm that the structure that we use to analyze this molecule, which is a bent molecule, that means that it's um, a floppy molecule, which is always moving. So the, the, there is a lot of vibrational mode that are, are um, accumulated. So it's more difficult to resolve the vibrational structures. Uh, even, though, even like this, uh, considering this aspect, <clears throat> we can provide uh, perfectly one of the rotational constants that uh, uh, in agreement with experimental data. <clears throat> um, we also, we can study different isotopologies for every system. And in this case, we use the two small substitutions. We can do also double substitution or triple substitution as you wish. Uh, in this case, we just use just mono substitution. We analyze the same system. Um, using deuterium or using a carbon 13. Um, and we can, and also we compare our data. No, there is this, this uh, job. It was the, the first one uh, that provide, that can provide different data like this for those systems. Nobody before us was 
characterize the, those isomers in this way so deeply. Um, and also the comparison between perturbational theory and variational method um, get us an uh, opportunity to feel confident about the spectrum. And this was a kind of benchmark for us uh, with this work. Um, <clears throat> because all the agreement, all the data were in, in a really good match using different uh, level of theory. Okay. Um, also, we we are we we are still working together with this group, and time to time we have a different um, um, ideas, uh, or because there is a contingency or news when the when when phosphina was the news, so we start to analyze molecules with phosphorum. So, but t t titan and. Uh, it's uh, it's always in our mind because certainly we have information, but we we don't have a, enough time to resolve many many questions that you can have. But one of the question for for all the community was regarding to the mass spectrum, because there was a signal that we cannot uh, properly assign to any molecule that must be on Titan. Um, and with this uh, problem, with this issue, we start to see which kind of combination of atoms can provide us uh, molecules uh, that can be a really good candidate for this uh, signal. And then we analyzed that the titan is formed with a lot of methane, a lot of nitrogen um, bearing molecules, so we, and also carbon. So we do a match and we, we start to think in this carbon type of groups. And we study the surface, we analyze different isomers, we locate where the isomers are. So we obtain the energies, um, also the frequencies and rotational constant as well, including a lot of correction as we did in the past with other systems um, using the spectra. And also for we propose these uh, molecules, this family of molecules as a, as a really good candidate to be responsible for this signal. <clears throat> and another aspect that we can uh, also do or abhor are non-rigid molecules. And the non-rigid molecules like this are, for example, this is urea or dimethyl ether or any molecule that can be rotated uh, is considered a non-rigid molecule. And then you have there, when you have this type of molecules, <clears throat> the, the, the expert people say that the perturbational theory, theory is not gonna be works or gonna be really bad. So we run calculation just using variational methodolo methodology um, and we characterize different pathway to obtain one or two uh, different channels, um, the interformation between one or two isomers. So the urea is, was detected uh, <clears throat> a long time ago. It's also, there is a lot of experimental result regarding with this, but all the infrared uh, laboratory results are focusing on argon and and also they consider that urea it's a, it's in a plane. It's a, but but certainly when we have an interstellar medium and when the molecules are former, essentially we have no idea how the molecules are Format there. I'm going to show you a little bit about this. Um, certainly, the molecule is not essentially must be in the most stable um, geometry. And every geometry is related with the symmetry for us. So, a molecule in a plane um, like this, like urea, um, must be C to B, um, but it's not the only um, symmetric group that they can have. So it's, uh, the focus on this work with, was to study different uh, sym symmetries for these, ice, for these molecules and provide, um, of course, 
the data. Um, when the when the the, the, the data is coming from Alma, it look like this essentially, and to resolve this, uh, it, it can be a really really long time, no, to resolve an spectrum like this. I think um one of the our mate in the past took more than she took she works on this more than five years to resolve lines and as, and do some assignations um, to get something like this and to and to analyze in any spectrum which of this line can be related with one transition for one molecule okay um just one transition is necessary for a, for any detection the answer is not we we must get a lot of transition a lot of coincidence in in one of this type of a spectrum um spectrum okay to to accept one detection um, um, um. Okay, I have to have floating. Okay, um, here's another example. It was um, this was a collaboration with the astronomer that uh, we are working together also in our group. Um, and this is was a, another spectrum was more simple, of course. Uh, it was processes was already process under process, and we can uh, assign um. A, a couple of uh, U lines as well, using uh, um, just a few or uh, few part of our results. But um, um, I mentioned many many times maybe that the uh, molecule must be former and are former in a laboratory with the, uh, with the really bad conditions, right? Low densities, low temperatures. Under these molecules are former and are detected on gas phase. That's Certainly, that we know that, and are detected from different instruments in different regions, um, but they are detected in gas phase essentially. And the models to reproduce the abundance for these molecules are some of this. I'm going to show you um, quickly that which are the models that the people try to use uh, to understand how molecules can be formed on gas phase. Okay, so the first one are your neutral reaction, okay, like this, and then you must get the activation energies, then you have uh, barriers, um, there is different type of reaction that can be exothermic reaction, or, or most of them are also endothermic reaction, so you can have um, many different um, parameters that consider when you have a ion and a molecule reaction, and Please don't forget that we are in a really ex, a really bad condition, low temperature, low density. So the probability that that um, molecule and an ion get the match, get a, an effective collision, uh, and enough energy to cross the barrier and for product, uh, well, it can be um, the probability is too low, and it's happen. And maybe gonna be in a time scale really, really um, long. Uh, in the case of a neutron neutron reaction, they are also um, active energy barriers, and uh, and the the coefficient, the break coefficients, is proportional to the temperature. They are ten. They are a local temperature, not uh, not the. It's not related with the temperature of the or medium no because if we are thinking in a star or in a circular stellar region maybe the temperature are higher but essentially um this is the molecule on gas phase they must be react on gas phase okay yeah and the gas phase is basically the interest like medium so the temperatures are lower so um those are the main models that the community had been used for a long time ago to try to reproduce, uh, to, to, to get the molecule, understand how or propose how the molecule must be formed and correlate this model with the abundance. 
okay? And for many years, this was working and working for most of the molecules, as I mentioned, molecules with less than four atoms, okay? Um, but is this, uh, is it still working for molecules with more than six atoms? The answer again is no, it's not working at all. So, but the point is that the molecules, the complex molecules are still there, but we essentially, uh, no one of this model can be applied properly to reproduce abundance of uh, complex organic molecules. So uh, we have uh, here a lot of work to do and we are really, uh, we, we are in a hurry, but we don't have uh, many tools there. Um, even when, we're, when we think about the formation of our molecular hydrogen, so um, we can estimate, we can estimate, um, I'd like to just give me a sec. Uh, when we, sorry, when we think about the formation of a molecular hydrogen, so uh, it can be happening is the most abundant molecules in the universe, the hydrogen as every, everyone knows, but even for two atoms, it's too slow, right? Uh, so um, must be any other way to obtain uh, molecular hydrogen? For sure, we believe in dust. Um, and that's we trust most of the community say that now, because dust are uh, the key aspect. Or dust provide the surface where the molecules can be interact is our catalyst, right? And this is the way that the um, that the molecular hydrogen is actually formed. The, the, this is the evidence and there is no any doubt regarding to this process. The formation of a molecular hydrogen must be happened over the dust, over the any interstellar or air stellar dust, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna be really, really hard considering temperatures, densities, and probabilities, and um, collisional rates and temperature of the different mediums. So those are essential to understand today the answer chemistry. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about the process, the main process that can happen or present on dust. We certainly believe that, um, well, there is different stage that were, uh, where the process are a little bit different between them. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit in, in general. Um, but at the beginning, um, we have uh, we have the, the dust, okay, under really low uh, temperatures. Uh, frozen, okay, and the dust can be formed by different molecules, and most of them are formed by silicon, carbon, iron as well, um, and titanium, some of them, they're going to be the pen of the region, but the dust are covered for mantles, mantles uh, uh, which are frozen, and the molecules can um, um, arrive to the mantle and, and stick on the mantle, on the mantle and if the temperature increase, um, then the molecules can diffuse. And if you, they can diffuse, they can react, and then our molecules are released to the to the gas phase. And at this moment, molecules can be detected. But molecules are essentially not uh, the context molecule. Most of them are not. We are not believe that the molecules can be formed on gas phase. Um, Okay, here we have the models and forming the any dust is some, just a model can be formed by silicatus or carbonaceous uh, molecules and molecules are are the um, deposited over the dust and molecules can be also diatomic it's, uh, 
kind of simple obtain carbon monoxide in different regions, but then um, the dust is, is uh, exposed to low temperatures and, and we create a molecular ice mantle. And what's happened after this is that we have uh, uh, inputs um, related with the environments. Um, we can have a head input and observe thermal desertion. If we have a UV light input, we can observe photodesertion. And if we have a cosmic ray input, which is so common, then we have an other process as sputtering and electron simulation desertion. Um, and this uh, is the way when molecules uh, that are in the ice mantle are affecting but this input so molecules can still can also react diffuse and react because the dust increase in his temperature and molecules also start to move and collision are more effective and form new products well Professor Tiens a long time ago was discussing about this. He was always discussing before that anyone <laughs> new ideas. And he was also thinking on this and in, in 1982. But this publication is in 2013. And he explained a lot of, uh, uh, um, a lot of things regarding to the chemistry considering surface reactions. And he said that the, if we have the dust, um, essentially, the inner part, uh, it's not relevant, it's not going to be um, important, um, it's, it, it, it's not, um, the most important part, he said, that it's going to be the external part of any dust. And of course, it seems to be um, logic, right, that the, if we have a, a core, which is covered by many molecular mantles. So then the reactive part, it just happened outside in the, in the external part of the any dust. And considering this, we start to think or look for different tools to try to modulate um, an, a dust or a type of dust. And we move a little bit uh, from the spectroscopy of initial to, um, to develop clusters, uh, simulated or mimic an, um, an, a dust. And in this case, uh, we, uh, in, we use uh, molecular, um, bonne molecular dynamics, and, and we built we a cluster know, of methanol uh, formed by two molecules of methanol. And this is our model. So we put our cluster in a sphere. We divide the sphere in different positions and uh, we impact the cluster with different uh, input. And the input in this case for us, it was molecules. So we use, um, we impact those cluster with different projectiles or diatomic molecules. Um, here you can see in this fur different position, different impact position, um, not at the same times, one at the time. And then we have to wait one week for every calculation, and then we analyze results. And then the next position, another week of, of uh, calculation, and then analyze results. And, and this is uh, the chemical network that we can obtain for some of the uh, simulations. So if we start with our mantle formed by 10 molecules of methanol and we impact with the OH radical, then we can, we were all available to observe many from many conformations. The things using this tool is, amazing because when we use this tool where well, we apply this uh to these techniques um to using different projectiles um the radical and the cation and the anion and we uh we must to include uh, an input energy 
an energetic input uh, to to provide movement of the projectile and we start we we do a scan to select the best uh, energies um, to produce the to 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 allow to our projectile um, impact the, our cluster. Now our cluster was frozen but has to be received any projectile and for this we we must to include a, an input an energy as an input. Okay. Um, the, 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 the things using the Bonobenheimer molecular dynamics that, that you can see um, through the old simulation, how the bonds are formed or are broken. And, and you can stand after this, you can analyze the population, you can analyze the charge, and you can analyze, of course, the spectroscopy and the structures, but the most important thing is that you can follow and understand the mechanisms to form product and every single step. And here's an, a shot that they explain this. We start with reactions. We can, we can see and follow the line. We can see perfectly when the, when the stay, the first transition stay, I didn't put TS, for technical reason, because it wasn't a transition state, but it's it's uh, the behavior was like this, no? But uh, here they are not the uh, imaginary frequency, which is uh, um, uh, something important when you have a transition state. But here is all the the frequency were positive, but he's an intermediate between the reactants, and this is an intermediate structures. And this structure then is going to interact and going to go down in energy once again and going to produce two products. And we can follow the dynamics um, in every single step. And this is an amazing result. Um, we using this uh, information, we perfectly we can discuss uh, the mechanistical aspect for obtaining any more, any complex organic molecules. Uh, we can stop the simulation and we can see what is going on is essentially in this uh, in every single step. Uh, for here, for example, to obtain the methyl ether. So we certainly everything is start must be a start with an homolytic rupture. Then uh, then the system suffer a uh, proton attraction is you know and then for water then we observe how the methoxy radical was formed and then of course in the last step to obtain dimethyl ether it must be the radical radical association so we can follow all the simulation analyze every single step and we can uh, propose new um, formation pathway that's the key aspect of these tools we compare some of our results with the photochemistry experiments made by, made by current over, and we have a, a huge match between results. Essentially, she started with a mantle made by methanol, and she used she was using an, an energy about ten eV, and we we obtain many similar systems. Okay, um, so we, this uh, this uh, type of work is still in process. So we have a lot of results every year since uh, 2019 till now. We are processing simulation and we are publish every year at least one or two papers regarding to this. Um, when we use a OH radical, I show you the chemical network. Um, for example, the community was so interesting to understand how this um, hydroxymetoxine um, uh, radical was formed and we propose in this paper how it can be formed and this molecule was detected um, and also people was worried about the dials and there are mo many molecules that are now I keep precursor to obtain other molecules. And you can see here in this slide, the different radicals. And the community was uh, worried about the hydroxymethyl, for example. And we can explain why it's not 
detected yet this isomer um, and we also propose in the new papers i'm not sure it's this uh, using o oh cation and we propose many different ways to obtain formaldehyde um, using the same tools and in for example here's an example and how can we form the formal dye and not using the uh, the typical hydrogenation process that the, most of the community propose considering the time scale and also um considering the in, the ingredient and the input that any region can have okay uh we can if we if we certainly we know that the formal diet uh, has a a huge abundance regarding to the, um, for example, to the water, uh, and the key aspect to obtain this molecule is essentially the, the formation of the hydroxymethyl. We propose um, the answer the, uh, on why the this uh, precursor is not detected, if it, if, if it, um, because it is so reactive. And when it's former, immediately, React and produce a formal dye. One of this uh, is proposed in this paper. And we compare, of course, in an, another contribution, we can we compare the difference between energy and the outcomes. And uh, when we can find a rich chemistry, uh, essentially when we use the OH cation. And uh, there, the chemistry it's rich, yeah, and also it's rich when we use a white radical. But this, uh, uh, and uh, when we use the oil anion, is of course every time that we impact our mantle with oil anion, we obtain methoxy radical, just methoxy, and this is consist with the detections because it's always the methoxy. It's the, the unique radical. Coming from the metal rupture that can is detected till today. We talk about uh, those uh, reactions, our um, every single step in our mechanisms, and we use uh, gas grain codes, um, which is a uh, was raw for one of the our student in the group, and we we put some parameters to try to estimate the, the times and the and in, improve the in abundance of uh, every molecules. And so this is this work is in still in process um, for this type of reaction, because here, one of the input important are always the binning energies. And this is the key aspect that we must to improve. Um, but essentially, we can discuss a little bit about the ab abundance when we include new uh, different channels to obtain different products. This is our national and international collaborations that um, at the Enrica at the beginning um, mentions. Um, Professor Tillens, my inspirations, uh, Professor Tings uh, Lee, who just passes away. So um, and we are really, really sad yet. Um, astronomers from the Universidad de Chile. Uh, we are part of my. They are part of my my group, and we are working every every time together. Paola Caselli, uh, Professor Sanichado, and his group. Time to time, we discuss a little bit. My group in Chile. It's uh, made with the chemist people, chemistry, and people coming from the astronomy, and we discuss um time to time any new issue to provide new data so we create the astrochemistry school so we have a, this um kind of worship school every two years so you are so welcome to participate with us this was the first one the second one and this was the last one so we have to postpone the third one because it was a pandemic but we finally um, we we have our school last November and and it was uh, with a, um, amazing student and amazing professors as well. We learn a lot of our rotational spectroscopy. Um, thank you very much for your attentions. Um, I'm able to receive your questions. <laughs> thank you very much, Natalia. Very interesting work. Thank you. So we have some time 
uh, for question. Mm. You can write it uh, in the chat if you want. Well, I have a question. I was wondering uh, how much time consuming uh, e 